Hi, uh, welcome everyone. This video is to show someone who's uh, trying to configure a lab machine for 10775 Microsoft class. Okay, first you would download the 10775 all files.exe. Okay. As you double click on this file, it will extract a bunch of files into a fixed location. Okay, so run. Once you click on accept, the default location is C program files Microsoft Learning 10775 all files. Okay, so I'm going to just extract to the default location. Okay, I'm going to close this out. Close this out. Now there are a few key uh, setup for the 10775 because the lab solution file expects a certain alias to be created. Now I'm going to go to C drive, go to the location, program files, Microsoft Learning 10775. Now you'll find that there is, um, for each module, there tends to be a setup. Now the very first module, uh, the, the first module that uh, uses the restore uh, is module four. We'll get to that in just a moment. But let's suppose we open up module two project. Okay, there is a SSMS solution file. Okay, now the way the solution file works is that it embeds within the solution a pointer to the project. Now, along with the project, you will find a file called SQL proj file. Inside of this file, I'm just going to open with Notepad. Now, as you open the Notepad, you'll notice that this connection has a predefined server name and authentication mechanism. So as you can see that we're expecting a server called AdventureWorks and a server called Proseware. So that means those aliases must translate to your locally installed SQL Server. Okay. We're using alias because each machine will have different machine names. Your machine and my machine has different uh, names. So for example, my computer name is Win75, etc., etc. That's my local machine name. So you can always find your machine name by right-click on computers under the Start menu and select Properties, and it will tell you what the computer name is. So what we want to do is to have the Prosware, as well as AdventureWorks, connected to a SQL Server instance, the one we install locally. Okay. Now, I already have a SQL Server installation completed, so I can use the SQL Server Program Group and go to Configuration Tool. Now, under SQL Server Configuration Manager, now you'll notice that I have a SQL Server Services. Now this will confirm my default instance is up and running. Okay, the default instance carries the name MS SQL Server. Okay, so if that works. Now there are two places where you can configure the alias. Okay, one is the native client 32-bit alias. So here I will create a new alias so that Prosware, oops, sorry about the capital locks, Prosware connects to my local machine. Now, here I can simply use localhost if that's my local machine. If it's a, a remote machine, I will copy and paste the machine name. Okay. So Presently, I'm just going to use TCP IP, and the default port is 1433, and connecting to localhost. Localhost is a name for the local machine. Now, I can also type this win-75JDM, etc., and that will work as well. I can click on change name, and then use this to copy and paste. So either one is fine. Okay. Again, if you have a remote machine, then you have to use fully qualified machine name. Click on Apply. 
Okay. Now, what this allows me to do is to use my SQL Server Management Studio okay, and say I want to use Object Explorer. And I'll make a new connection. Connect database engine. Now I can say Prosware. And this will connect me to an instance. That's the default instance because I'm using an alias. I'm going to expand the database. Okay. Now I have more database than you probably would have. That's fine. Okay. I install these at VentureWorks by downloading the Microsoft sample databases from CodePlex. When you go to CodePlex.com, this is where uh, you can find all of the SQL Server examples. Okay, you'll find Northwind database, you'll find uh, SQL Server sample databases. They are Northwind. So you'll find AdventureWorks database for developer training and so on. So there will be an, a, a schema that you can download and follow the direction to uh, either restore or attach these database. Okay. So if it, for, ex for example, AdventureWorks sample database, okay. you can click the uh, Downloads tab to download a copy of AdventureWorks. Okay. Now if you click on that, notice that's a 77 megabyte uh, download the zip file. Okay. Now, while it's downloading, I'm going to minimize this for the time being. Okay, that's fine. All right, so the lab, for example, uh, the lab that uses the uh, particular setup, for example, module four. I would double click on the solution file for module four. Okay. Now, right now I don't see any files because I don't have the solution explorer. There is a solution explorer. Okay. Now notice there are, there is a connection for AdventureWorks and a connection Prosware. Now, uh, different file have. Uh, each of these files has a dependency to one of these connection definitions. Okay. I have set up Proseware. I haven't set up AdventureWorks yet. Okay. So to set up AdventureWorks, I'll right-click on Alias and select New Alias. And here I'll create an AdventureWorks as well. The port is always, uh, for SQL Server, the default port is 1433. And the server, again, I'm going to use localhost. For my local uh, SQL instance. Okay, so now I have AdventureWorks as well as Prosware. Now that configures the dependencies. Okay. So if I want to write a query against AdventureWorks, I can right click and say New Query. Okay, now this will give me a query window. Now, just if you notice under the status bar, tells me what alias I'm connecting to, what's the machine, uh, sorry, what's the account I'm connecting to the database as, which database I'm on. Okay. So here, any installed database can be selected from. Okay. All right. So for example, module four talks about, uh, in this case, uh, database ownership. So if I'm connected to, uh, in this file, notice this file as I open it up, setup. It uses the Prosware alias, and it's tried to run this, use master, go. And this will switch the database context to master. Okay. Notice right now, at present time, I do not have a market dev database. So the next command, if exists, where name equal market dev, this simply find out 
if there's already a database called market dev on this system if there is drop it the next line is trying to restore the database from disk okay with move to now because there are drive setup for everyone okay on this virtual machine my D drive is actually a CD-ROM an emulated CD drive okay so I will need to restore the database to a different location other than D drive and also the from disk it's not going to be the same either okay now I have a couple of choices I can uh, try to do away with this D drive and create a attached VHD drive okay I can certainly do that okay to have a D drive and an L drive okay now to use emulated VHD you can right click on the computer in the start menu and select manage and on the storage node you have a disk management okay. now the first thing you need to do is you probably want to change the drive letter so you can free up the D drive that we need okay so let's move the D drive to something like V okay because we don't practically need it, need it. okay so I can say create VHD now these VHD file will then become the D drive and the L drive that I'll need okay so I'm going to say create VHD these VHD will sit on my local hard disk okay so I'm creating a, a drive off of a virtual hard disk file okay and I'm putting my document I'll call this D drive okay it needs not to be very large okay in fact uh, D drive I'm just going to give it one gig that's all I need okay it's more than enough and I'll also right click again I will create another VHD file again I will give this a name called L drive I put it on my local document folder L drive I'll choose dynamic expanding and a thousand, uh, one, one gig is plenty for purpose all right now we haven't assigned a drive letter nor uh, initialized the drive yet this is going to appear to be brand new drive so we're going to initialize disk one and two and then right click on the first one disk one and say we want to create a simple volume using all the space available and give it a drive letter D okay I'm taking everything as default and click on finish now I'll right click on the next volume and say new simple volume next next this time I'm going to give an L drive okay click on OK finish once I have the D and L I'm going to confirm the location again so notice the setup expect D 10775 labs folder to be there so I'm going to copy this and go to my D drive so notice this D drive and L drive now exists so I'm going to create a new folder with that name 10775 labs now here I will go to the extracted location okay, go to my C program files Microsoft learning 10775 all files and I will copy or move it's up to you okay, everything in this directory to the labs now that will satisfy this path Okay, so now if you look at that path, you're going to find marketing dev, market dev dot back. So let's just confirm that. I'm going to copy that path, paste into it, and make sure we are good here. Next, there are two additional folders that I need, MKTG and 
mktg folder in D and L. So that's straightforward. Go to D drive, create a new folder called mktg. And also in the L drive, create an mktg folder. And the goal here is that we want the log file to go to L drive. We want a data file to go to the D drive. So subsequently, when we run this, okay, okay, oops, oh no, okay, I'm getting this error because apparently I made the L drive a bit too small. All right, so it looks like I made my L drive a bit too small. So um, what I have to do is correct this mistake. Uh, go right-click on computer again, manage. And apparently one gig is not enough for this lab exercise. So I'm going to go to L drive and right-click and delete the volume. Okay, And right-click on the disk two and detach VHD. Okay, so I'm going to delete the virtual hard disk completely. Pretend I never made that mistake again. Um, this time I'm going to create a VHD here. And location again, uh, go to browse. So L drive dot VHD. This time I'm going to make it uh, 3 gig. So hopefully not make that mistake again. All right, and hopefully D drive is sufficiently sized. So right click, initialize the disk. Again, right click, create a new simple volume, take all defaults, and make sure it goes to L drive. Next, 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 finish. All right, so now I have an F drive, that's an L drive. Okay, so that's fine. Now my L drive, make sure there's a folder called mktg. And let's see if we can do away with this error message. Restore database marketing dev. All right, so it looks like it's a go. Now this restores the database to the location. And subsequently, don't forget the last command, this assign the owner okay, to EventureWorks administrator. Now, we don't have a domain here, okay? So we may want to replace that with a period, means uh, the local machine administrator, okay? All right, so since that's not resolved, we will need the computer name, actually. So again, because uh, our machine may not be running under domain, okay? So we may be a standalone machine. In that case, we will just use machine name backslash administrator. Okay, so now that alter authorization make the current logon administrator the owner of the database. All right, so with that, when we use the drop down box, okay, we should now have an MK a market dev database of which we can run through the various exercises such as creating the table, inserting the table, various demonstrations. Okay, this will create a database Okay, so for example, for this, it will create a database and it will complete successfully. So this should walk you through how to prepare a machine to be used to run 10775 lab. Thank you.